Hey guys, it's Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers. Hope all is well. So here with another Ask an Expert series. We got an in-house guest today. It's the first time we've ever done this type of setup, so it's pretty cool. So today we got head of North Fort Myers Civic Association, right? Yes, sir. Yep, Doug Daly. Doug, Pleased nice to, to see you. You too, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Hey, appreciate the invite. Yeah, for sure. So you guys, what we thought was going to be pretty cool, what we're going to start doing is, um, you know, we're here in Southwest Florida. I'm in the mortgage business, which is, you know, real estate driven. And I thought it'd be cool to start getting some segments in about the history of the area. And so uh, Doug is one of the first ones that reached you back out to me. We're getting set up. So today we're going to talk about North Fort Myers, right? Yes, sir. So Doug, let's fill the listeners in there uh, that what makes you, uh, why are you here today to talk about North Fort Myers, your expertise, like your background? My background, well, I'm a 50 year resident of North Fort Myers. Uh, moved here in 1968 with the family. Of course, that was back when I was about seven years old or so, so I couldn't afford to rent to stay north. So I had to come down with the family. Yeah, no choice. So I, I grew up here in North, I grew up in uh, North Fort Myers since 1968. Did you go to North High? I went to North High, graduated of North High, class of 1980. Oh, class of 80 class. out there, Red Knights. <laughs> go, go Red. Right. So, uh, but no, I've, I've lived here and uh, grew up here. And uh, I had a chance to become this past year the president of the North Fort Myers Civic Association. I was voted in uh, as that. And uh, it's a uh, volunteer community organization, but uh, I just wanted to give back to the community that gave to me. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to uh, become the president of taking it. And uh, we're just trying to uh, increase public awareness and the good things about North Fort Myers. And we got a call from you saying, hey, we want to do this. And it was like, Come on, let's 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 go. <laughs> That's so perfect. So it just it just worked out, and I'm really in, enjoying being able to talk about North Fort Myers. Oh, cool. So full disclosure out there: I was born and raised in Cape Coral. Um, moved over into Fort Myers, probably ten or fifteen years lived there. Then over the last year, moved over to North Fort Myers now. So not only am I interviewing them, I'm also a resident there. So you get interviewed by a resident too here. So. Well, Tim, glad to have you in North Fort Myers. You made the right choice. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. I, we've loved it so far. So it's been cool. Um, so let's get down to it. Let's. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you want in the history of North Fort Myers? Where do you want to start the little journey here? Well, let's start the journey basically from the very beginning. Uh, let's go back to the days of Jose Gaspar and. Uh, well, better known as Gasparilla back in the days when uh, the Spanish were uh, talking about, thinking about colonization of, of the, the Florida coast. Um, back in the day, uh, Jose Gaspar came over on his vessel and uh, actually the vessel got into an altercation with uh, one of the U.S. warships at the time. And uh, unfortunately for Mr. Gaspar and his crew, they're, they're a vessel got sunk right off, off the southwest Florida coast. Somewhere, as legend has it, somewhere around the Charlotte, uh, Lee County, North Lee County line. And at that point, they were able to, they collected uh, in their journeys, uh, chest loads of gold, silver, whole things like that. And um, when the vessel sunk, they were able to get about 10 of those chests up on shore. And as I said, this is somewhere up around the uh, South Punta Gorda, North End, uh, Lee County line up in that area. And they brought them ashore and during that time where they were on the beach and they were, they were beached there for quite some time and then they figured, hey, we need to do something with all this gold, we need to do something with these chests in order to come back at a later time and be able to pick those things up. And legend has it that these chests were taking taken from that beach area somewhere up into the North Fort Myers area. And they were buried in different locations somewhere up around North Fort Myers. And to this day, they still yet to be discovered. Hmm. So no telling, you know, uh, legend has it that there's uh, about 10 chest loads of gold and silver and things like that up in, up in the North Fort Myers area. So literally we're a rich community so yeah, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. and uh, and and that that was just a fascinating story that I found uh, living here and growing up here. Is, do we do we have anyone in Norfolk Myers like 
like our own uh, Nicolas Cage, uh, you know, looking for the national treasure. They have like that person that's trying to find Gaspar's treasure and no and, As far as I know, there's nobody out there. Huh. Um, uh, so if anybody's interested and wants to move to North Fort Myers, hey, you might get lucky. <laughs> yeah, geez, be rich, good deal. <laughs> But that cool. was that was in the very early days of the, of, of North Fort Myers, and I said that's one of the first legends that that came about the area. But North Fort Myers itself didn't really start to to start settling until about the late 1800s, early 1900s. And at that point, North Fort Myers, being the area that it is, the wide area that basically runs from what is now uh, Hancock Bridge Parkway out to uh, Northeast 24th, which is where the uh, the, uh, the baseball fields are located out all the way until uh, State Road 31 and up to the Lee County line is all unincorporated North Fort Myers. Okay. And it's a pretty big area. Right. Uh, you know, the the land size for North Fort Myers is actually the largest land size unincorporated area in Lee County. Um, uh, at the time, back in the early 1900s, there was settlement areas in North Fort Myers, and North Fort Myers was actually known for that time for as a milling area, uh, they would bring in uh, and do all the milling from basically the eastern portion of Lee County, west portion of Henry County. Uh, that they would go out there and they would get the uh, old world pine trees and they would bring them in, and they would bring them into the the different mills located. But during that time, there was, as I said, there was different settlements, and in North Fort Myers, they're still kind of distinguishable out there to this day. Uh, you had uh, the Slater community, which is basically up on Slater Road mm -hmm. up there. You had the Bayshore community, which now you can still find the little community area located uh, just east of the uh, I-75 uh, interchange out there, um, past the railroad tracks, and you go south, and that area is still a little bit of, there's still a little bit of Slater left out, out there in that area. But uh, there was different names for different portions of these settlements uh, in North Fort Myers. Were they all like, wow, like was it the Slater family, a Bayshore family, or was it just like whatever they... Uh, yeah, it was more under, yeah. They was, felt like naming it. They, 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 I believe they had family names to them okay. that for those different communities. Now, one of them was named Woodrow. Uh, they wanted to name that after President Woodrow Wilson at the time uh, for one of their communities. Also, another community name up there was New Prospect. Uh, Cabana City was one of the... Uh, the settlements up there, and that was actually at the corner of which is now uh, old US 41 and Pondella Road, where that connects, and just to the east side of that, you can see some of the old coral cottages and things like that. That was the old Cabana City. O uh, old 41 and Pondella? Yes. Okay. Where they come together during, basically in that area. was Like little, Smoking Pit? And right uh, just the, south of that, in that area. area, yeah. Great barbecue, by oh, the way, Smoking Pit. Gotta love Smoking Pit, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Take out, I swear, like... I got a family of, not to go off subject here, but a uh, family of five, and we get the, um, it's a feast, I don't know the exact word they have for it, but it's like 30 something dollars. It's nothing. Oh yeah. For five, and it feeds for like two days. And the, and the go, baked beans are world. Go check them world, out. Baked beans are world pit. famous too. Oh, the baked oh, beans oh, are God, I love the baked beans. Oh, yeah. I love that. I talk about this for an hour. Oh, we could we could go on, so we better stop yeah, yeah. there. Bring, bring us back. All right, bring bringing us back to the yeah. early 1900s. Um, yeah, those settlements were back then, and then uh, the original bridge that connected across the Caloosahatchee River is not the uh, Edison Bridge like a lot of people believe. It was actually a little more, more east of that, uh, out over at uh, Old Bridge Park, just uh, on the other side of what is now the uh, Lee County Electric Cooperative Building. Back in there, that was the original route to the bridge that connected up with Tarpon Road on the other side just by Terry Park. Okay. And Fort Myers. That was the original bridge that connected Fort Myers and, and North Fort Myers at the time to bring all the milling and, and things across at that point. And then uh, when Thomas Edison lived in Fort Myers, then of course they wanted to, they built the bridge in, in honor of Thomas Edison, which was the old Edison Bridge, which was the old draw bridge that mm -hmm. used to be there. And uh, But uh, every, a lot of people think that that was the original bridge. It, it was not. It was actually, and that's why the name you have Old Bridge Park is because that's where the Old Bridge was located. Gotcha. At that point. And that was in the area of what was then New Prospect. And uh, right in front of the Lee County, again, in front of the LCEC building, 
there's remnants of that with uh, the New Prospect Cemetery. You can go in there, and there's actually a little cemetery located between Bayshore Road and Bayline. Uh, little cemetery is New Prospect Cemetery. So that's one of the oldest cemeteries in Lee County. Huh, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what else, when did it, um, it start becoming um, you know, more of the Norfolk Myers that we know? That was around the uh, late 40s, early 50s. Um, as I said, people started coming over when the, when the Edison Bridge was built. That, that brought a lot more people to be able to come to the north side because really at that time the, the original bridge was mostly made, you know, designed for bringing over the mill work and things like that. But now there was actual way of being able to transport and be people to be able to go back and forth. So that was like at the uh, the mid thirties, early forties, okay. when No Fort Myers really started to to develop. Now the uh, Caloosahatchee Bridge uh, was built in the uh, mid sixties, but for a while there, it was. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but it was considered the bridge to nowhere. Um, the Caloosahatchee. The Caloosahatchee Bridge was considered the bridge to nowhere because. Uh, they had actually started building when 41 actually started being built on the south side. They wanted to, to bring that over to the north side. But uh, at that time, there was no land acquisition. They started building the bridge but didn't have the land acquired on the north side for 41 to continue. So the bridge was actually built and stayed there for a couple of years before it was actually connected to what is now US 41. In North Fort Myers there, and that was like in the uh, oh, about the mid early to mid sixties. So they built the bridge and had nowhere nowhere to go once he got into North Fort Myers. Right. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So for a while there it was it was considered the bridge to nowhere, huh. and uh, which was found fascinating. And and the uh, bridge finally was uh, finished up around sixty seven or sixty eight somewhere in the, in that point. Yeah. And 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 once that happened, and then North Fort Myers really started. To, to produce to where it is today. Yeah, when I was a kid, that was the that was the the bridge, right. like that was the bridge in and out. Like, and also the river was like the Great Wall of China almost. It was like, <laughs> oh, we gotta go in the Fort Myers. Oh God, we gotta go over that bridge. Like, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, but that was the only way in and out like, until Cape Coral Bridge, you know, got put in. Right. So cool, man. I didn't know about that. The bridge to, to know what nowhere. Mm -hmm. So what else you got about North Fort Myers? Is is there any other little tidbits we need to know about? Because I, I want to touch on the Shell Factory next. Well, let's just go ahead and touch on that. Okay. So Shell Factory. Any of you guys have never been there? Uh, go check it out. Um, it is one of the most unique places I think you'll ever see. It's so, it's to me, there's a zoo, bumper cars. Uh, I, I don't remember there's go-karts now. But then there's like, they sell it seashells. Uh, there's a wax museum inside it. Like uh, all types of crazy stuff to me in there. And so go fill us in on the Shell Factory and when that got put in there. Uh, the Shell Factory, uh, believe it or not, actually did not uh, originate in North Fort Myers. It originated in Bonita Springs and was actually located uh, when it first was built. It was located at uh, the corner of East Terry and old, old US 41 in, in Bonita Springs. Eventually it was lo relocated in, uh, I believe it was the late 50s, early 60s. The Shell Factory was located up to No Fort Myers to its current location. Um, it is one of the last old Florida type of attractions left in the state of Florida to this day. So that's why it's unique. That's why it's a unique part of not only Lee County and No Fort Myers history, but Florida history as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, Landmark Arch has been there since the very beginning. Right. And that, that was always known as, as a destination point, especially back in the days when I-75, uh, when you first entered the state of Florida, and I-75 only went to Tampa, and then you had to go from US-41 south to get to uh, the Fort Myers area the way it is now. But back in the day when it was first put in there, they had uh, Shell Factory advertisement signs. Basically, every 10 miles or so, hey, so many miles to the Shell Factory, so many five. And this was from the, the state line to, to Tampa advertising the Shell Factory. It was a big deal back then. Um, but uh, because of that, a, a local artist back in the uh, mid-70s wrote a song on that called The Shell Factory Blues. And uh, it, you can actually find that on YouTube now, so 
YouTube. We will put that Shell in the Factory comment Blues section. I promise and, uh, you. And, and Ben and, Allen, if you want to redo Shell Factory Blues, Ben Allen Band, feel free. Should be another hit for you. <laughs> so, so that was uh, a little bit of a claim to fame on that one. It was. Uh, was this like a nationwide, like a popular artist? It was. It, it was popular local? in our area back then. We okay. had. Uh, we had uh, basically two radio stations in that time, and that was WMIR and WHEW, but they were the same affiliate at the time, but they would play that on a local basis, so it, it was a local pop, pop okay. culture hit right. gotcha. <laughs> for, for back in the day. <laughs> Funny. Cool. Um, okay, so like, no, uh, this is a question I just thought of. I don't mean to put you on the spot oh, no. here, but we started talking about smoking pit, and you know, I like to eat. I don't know if you guys know that, but like, there's also Brooks is a restaurant, you know, in Norfolk mm -hmm. Myers. So, like, what are some of your top places to eat that aren't um, aren't a chain? That aren't a chain. Okay, you hit you hit two of them there. Yeah, I'm Brooks gonna, is great too, guys. Oh, Brooks. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a local. Another local spot now that's really taking. Uh, I just go there a lot in my single days. <laughs> a really good popular place now is Moody River Grill, uh, that's located there. At, oh, right, in the, in the Publix. In the Publix. Plaza there at Orange Grove okay. and uh, Hancock. Uh, very, very good food. Uh, uh, a lot of local history, you know, there. The uh, Moody Moody River Grill. River Grill. Got and it. matter of fact, they've also been voted as one of the best breakfasts in Southwest Florida. Okay. Also, That's right uh, by my house. It's, I'm right around the corner from you, too. So I live right there in uh, Tropic Isles area. Okay. So that's that, to me, is a, is a spot to go. So, yeah, well, you know, one... Uh, one thing that um, kind of like history-wise for me with Norfolk Myers is um, my mom was um, heavily involved in uh, Moody Development, mm. and uh, it was Gerald Moody. Gerald Moody. She was the president of the Moody Development for mm -hmm. years, and uh, Gerald Moody had you know Norfolk Myers High School field named after him. That's correct. They developed uh, Willow Creek, Palm mm. Island. And some other stuff in there. So mm -hmm. now I got I kind of am aware of that area. You know, my granddad and I and my dad used to like work the Randag and all the Hancock Farms. And I mean, like my bus stop was right there. So <laughs> I was right in the middle of that stuff. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Like now it's all Moody River Estates and right. you know all built up. So let's get into the future of Norfolk Myers. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've seen a few things come down the pipe. So if you don't mind, just. Touching on, uh, sure. let, let's hit the um, the one uh, by Lockmore Country Club. Paradise uh, Par Isle. Paradise Isle. Hi, Paradise Isle. Okay, fill us in on that. Okay, Paradise Isle, that is a uh, basically a resort community that is being planned and is actually in the works. It's in the uh, permitting process right now through the county. Uh, it's located at the uh, very end of, uh, south end of Orange Grove Boulevard. Uh, where the old Lockmore Golf Course right. was located, that's going to be the uh, the main area. Uh, they're pr they're proposing a, a high-rise uh, motel hotel area, uh, shopping uh, restaurant entertainment district with a marina, a full full-scale marina, and they're also proposing a uh, a ferry shuttle bus uh, shuttle service ferry service to downtown Fort Myers from that area as okay. well. That's being proposed in there. Um, the golf course is will be uh, redone. Uh, so the people in uh, Lockmore Estates are extremely excited about that. And uh, Lockmore Golf Course was one of the premier golf courses of Southwest Florida at its time, so they want to bring that back. And hopefully with the designs and everything out there that they have for this, it'll be that once again. It, it's an exciting... Uh, opportunity for North Fort Myers. Um, this area is prime. This is an area of North Fort Myers that is prime for that type of development and will be a great addition uh, to that. Um, as I said, it's in the processing, planning process now. We're about a year and a half to two years away from actually breaking ground on this, but there have been uh, several town hall meetings and things on that, and there will be others uh, that the developer has scheduled uh, and we as the Civic Association have uh, been taking part in um, about what's coming up, what's the next stages and the next portions of these. So um, we'll be able to keep you informed on that as well through our, our uh, Norfolk Meyer Civic Association. Um, but uh, it's an exciting adventure and uh, here, hopefully within the next few years, that'll become a reality. And that's gonna change the uh, landscape of 
the uh, the uh, basically the western portion of North Fort Myers. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. Now that that would be uh, good for the community as well. So I mean, I think. Oh yeah. Um, so and then the other thing I, I've I've seen bits and pieces of it on the news with uh, 41 and Hancock Ridge Parkway. You know, you have that old uh, you know Walmart building and mm -hmm. like a lot of kind of just dead development right in there and I know there's some new things coming through you want to touch on that right uh, yeah that's a Hancock uh, that is area has been the area of no Fort Myers which has been deemed what uh, in uh, the local circles is called as ground zero basically for development of no Fort Myers it's the first thing when you see when you come over the bridge you see that off there that hey that's 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 a prime area that's just being underused but that was uh, that was the place in the eighties, right. like when I was a kid, like you know, going over the bridge, and I mean, that was like tons of stuff happening. Well, that was a, that was the site of the North Fort Myers original Walmart. Was that was the first thing that was, and and that's when Walmart first became a big deal, uh -huh. and North Fort Myers got got the uh, the Walmart on here, and that that place was a booming place. It had the cash and carry supermarket, and, cash and carry, and all the other. Uh, about that, uh, all the other. Uh, Mother Earth. In, I remember Mother Earth. Mother Earth, Earth was in there, there, right? There was a whole bunch of activity. The insurance companies were in there. That was a booming area. Uh, but when Walmart moved out, that became a dormant area. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's still dormant to this day. Right. Uh, there is a developer that uh, is located in Miami that has the, uh, the rights to the property, but uh, uh, the county and those with the Horizon Council and things like that for the area have been talking with the developer. So hopefully, hopefully we're keeping some fingers crossed that there might be some movement on that before too long. Because no one, no one really does. Anyone really know why he he just holding on to it for that long, or when, why doesn't sell it? Uh, he just he's, it? It, the developer at this point just wants to hold on to the property at this point. Um, unfortunately, from what we have found out that. Uh, they did hire a property manager. The the developer hired a property management company who wasn't holding their promises to the condition of what the property was. So um, uh, just recently, uh, we found out that they have changed property management companies to hopefully uh, clean up the property somewhat and to get it to to where it meets county code. and And there's a lot of things that need to be. D done with the property, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I said uh, Commissioner Hammond and the county commissioners approved a uh, two million dollar re revitalization for that entire area, which actually goes up to Merchants Crossing, which received part of that uh, funding here just the past couple weeks. So they'll be getting a whole different facade up to where Merchants Crossing is. That's going to go to an all Key West style facade. Oh, is it? And okay. things like that. So hopefully, once that gets going and they see something like that, that it might catch on. And, and, and come south as well. Um, there was a proposed town center area for that, but plans of that are still on hold. So right now it's in the, the hands of the private owner, and until something is done there, uh, the only thing that be, can be done is for it to uh, just be maintained code, and hopefully we can get get somebody in there and get, get the thing But the county's out. heavily involved, the commissioners are heavily involved in trying to Turn that thing around there, right? Yeah, they, they want to yeah. see that area because, as I said, it's it's an area that defines North Fort Myers, and right now, you know, it's in a, a centrally located area that I believe once that gets turned around, you're going to see a lot of things. Well, with so, tons of traffic going through there. I mean, we we got that racetrack going there now, right? <laughs> like life's made now. Like, but you know, right with, the corner. we're kind of as nice. a, as a civic and as a community up there, kind of hoping that. The uh, new Paradise Isle project, once it takes off and things go on that, that development is going to want to come over here because that's going to be a main route between mm -hmm. a destination. Of North Fort Myers will finally have a entertainment type of destination, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, with, say, restaurants and shopping and things like that that North Fort Myers has not seen before. So maybe we're, we're, we're in all hopes that uh, with the new Paradise Isle that that'll start taking care of, of, of itself with, you know, businesses and things that want to come over here and maybe uh, do something with that plaza and over there. So that's that's the hopes and the hopefully not so distant future. Cool. Do we miss anything? 
I think we, we you hit, crushed it. I think we hit a bunch today, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, you good. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so you guys, this is uh, Doug Daly, Norfolk Myers Civic Association. I know in talking with you earlier that, you know, you guys are, um, you know, you're uh, all volunteers. So, I mean, tell, you tell listeners, if you're out there and you live in Norfolk Myers and you want to maybe be involved, um, you know, film and where can they find you and help? Hey, um, yeah, we're always looking for anybody that wants to be involved in their community, whether it's a business, whether you're uh, uh, just a resident that is concerned and wants to be involved in your community, this is the place to go. Uh, we're the North Fort Myers Civic Association. We meet uh, at the North Fort Myers Recreation Center every second Tuesday of the month in North Fort Myers. Our meetings start at 6.30, go to about 8.30. We meet once a month. And uh, we talk about community issues, and we keep uh, everybody updated on community issues. Uh, if you would like to know more about us, go to our uh, website at nfmcivic.com. You can find a whole bunch of information on us as a civic association and uh, also how to become a member and, and to become involved in the community. Also like us on our Facebook uh, at North Fort Myers Civic Association as well. We keep that, we keep that currently updated up to the minute. Cool. So uh, we, we look forward to uh, everybody just becoming a part of North Fort Myers. It's a wonderful community. Uh, it's a family community, and uh, we just we just love North Fort Myers. There you go. Cool. Well, you guys like that Facebook page. Check them out on the website. Don't forget, if you like his page, you got to like mine as well. So don't forget to like us on Facebook. Share this with someone you know that lives in Norfolk Myers or they're looking to move into Norfolk Myers. Maybe one of your realtors out there sell Norfolk Myers. Keep this video on hand. That way your, um, you know, your contacts and stuff can check this out. So guys, appreciate the time. This is Tim Hart from Van Dyke Mortgage. Doug, thanks, man. Thank you, Tim. You did Appreciate awesome. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys.